In the final week of Matt Rule's tenure as head coach, the Carolina Panthers took to the field for a routine workout, some good old 7-7 seven and seven work. This session turned into a spectacle of mistimed routes, turnovers, and overthrown passes. The grim reality is that this team has no chance of winning without a proper quarterback. Stay with us, because in this video, we're going to rewind a little to see where and how the Panthers' woes started. First up, where did the franchise's downturn begin? Two names come to mind immediately, and the blame for the Panthers' abysmal downward spiral could probably be laying squarely at their doors, together and individually. They are the Panthers' owner, David Tepper, and Matt Rule, the now-ousted coach. Every single thread of the unraveling of this team can be followed back to decisions Rule and Tepper made at one position, quarterback. There was so much dubious decision-making and instability at the Panthers, which often included tussles among owners and disagreements between the front office and coaching staff. And all of this certainly highlights how strongly connected franchise strength and quarterback performance are. To see where the slide really began, Stay with us. That's coming up in a moment. Next, a staggering number of quarterbacks start for the Panthers under Rule. Firstly, we shouldn't forget that Rule was handpicked by David Tepper back in 2020. He was given a $62 million contract for seven years and also handed complete control of the roster. During his tenure, five quarterbacks in total started for the Panthers. This turned into a revolving door that became synonymous with the franchise's desperate scramble to locate and contract a top passer. All of these attempts and efforts ultimately failed. A former Rule staff staff member and NFL coaching veteran mentioned dryly that they kept on shooting for the stars but continued ending up with the likes of Sam Darnold and Teddy Bridgewater. Rule ultimately picked the wrong quarterbacks and in the process proved to be the wrong coach for the Panthers. But let's go back to where it began. The advent of the Rule reign allowed the Panther franchise to flip over a new leaf at quarterback. In 2019, Cam Newton's nine-year run came to an end because of mounting injuries. Eventually, in 2020, when the world was in the first spasms of COVID-19, the team parted ways with him without causing too many ripples. A source in the scouting squad indicated that they were ranking LSU's Burrow as top in the draft. Justin Herbert from Oregon was right up there as second, and Tua Tungavaloa from Alabama was on his heels at third. The same source said Rule knew that a long-term solution for a quarterback was on the cards, and that the impossibility of staff meetings and a complete, well-rounded evaluation process was being affected by COVID. To find out what happened in the draft, keep watching. Then, resistance to trading draft capital. The scout in Carolina wanted Herbert for the position. However, the front office at the Panthers worried a draft capital trade would harm other areas of the Panthers team. When the dust settled, Herbert slipped into six to the Chargers, and Tungavaloa got selected by the Dolphins at five. The Panthers remained at number seven and selected Derek Brown, the defensive tackler. Looking back, Rule had used all seven of his draft player picks on defensive players and created the first all-defender class in the common era. Okay, so now the draft arrives. By this time, Carolina had all but pulled the trigger on a quarterback plan that, according to sources, was built around Teddy Bridgewater. The veteran who had a history with the newly appointed Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Brady with the Saints played well in a stretch of five games where he relieved Drew Brees, an unrestricted free agent injured in 2019. Eventually, like with Rule, the Panthers secured Bridgewater with a contract worth $463 million. The industry considered this a sensible move and also an interim solution before a long-term move. The offense would have a transitional year while other areas of the Panthers team would be rebuilt through the draft. In the end, Herbert won Rookie of the Year, and Bridgewater was traded to the Broncos on the eve of the draft in 2021. His total earnings for one season with the Panthers was $31 million. Add to that a total of $24 million and an extra $7 million just to go away. Great job if you can get it. A flirtation with Matthew Stafford was on the cards. That in a moment. Keep watching. So, who is David Tepper, owner of the Panthers? David Tepper made a gazillion dollars as manager of a hedge fund before he bought the Panthers from the then embattled owner Jerry Richardson. The deal happened in 2018. Less than three years at the helm, Tepper was learning that pro football success wasn't all that easy to come by. Hitting three picks in the draft was extremely lucky for any team. Acquisitions of free agents often didn't pan out, and according to a source from the Panthers' front office, none of this sat well with Tepper. He was expecting the football guys around him to be right all the time, like they were looking at some kind of football balance sheet, and that just doesn't happen in the game. Sometimes experts are completely, 100% flat-out disaster disastrously wrong. Meanwhile, a brief flirtation with Matthew Stafford. Bridgewater was on his way out. The Panthers and Tepper fired Herney and started looking out for a bigger name. One of the most dependable quarterbacks in the league, Matthew Stafford, had put out a trade request. Frantic phone calls and an oh-so-close coup followed as Carolina tried to secure Stafford. But seemingly out of nowhere, and with the Panthers deal all but done, Stafford made an about turn and signed with LA. Stay with us to see how one of the worst ever deals happened for the Panthers. More on that shortly. Then, all eyes were on 
Darnold. At this point, three targets were being eyed. There was Drew Locke, who had a great stretch with 13 starts for Denver in the season before, Carson Wentz, who was unhappy with Philly, and Darnold, who was involved in a breakup with the Jets. A group text to Rule's coaches a couple of weeks after the evaluation session hinted that the Darnold trade was about to happen, and requested everyone to keep a lid on the information until further notice. A source inside the team later said of Rule's decision-making style that he simply wore everybody out until he got his way. This seemed to be the case with Darnold. The QB's problems with accuracy and turnovers at Denver were well documented, but Rule decided, very much on his own, to overlook these. And then, the trade happened. Eventually, the Panthers staked their immediate future to a QB that had a 13-25 and 25 track record with the Jets and hadn't produced a 20-touchdown season yet. The deal was that the Jets would receive a sixth-round 2021 pick and a second and fourth rounder in 2022, and for that, the Panthers would get Darnold. To make matters worse, Carolina then, in a bold move, doubled down. They guaranteed Darnold $18.8 million and picked up his option for year five without him setting foot on the pitch in a game for the Panthers. Now the downhill race is uncontrollable. To see how that unfolds, stay with us until the end of the video. Now, the steep descent into oblivion sped up. The initial view was that the $4.7 million due to Darnold in 2021 would be less than if he produced fireworks on the field that season. Tepper, according to a source in management, had questions about the value Rule had placed on Darnold, but eventually relented, albeit reluctantly. It all started swimmingly. Darnold produced a victory over the Jets. The next two games were wins, and this pushed the Panthers up to 3-0 for the first time in more than half a decade. It was the only highlight of Rule's reign at the Panthers. Then, the losses start. Five out of the following six games were losses. During those games, Darnold threw four touchdown passes to ten interceptions. Then, he promptly injured his throwing shoulder. The Carolina offensive line was subpar already, but then running back Chris McCaffrey got injured in week three. This surely contributed to the struggles Darnold was experiencing, but the failures he had produced in New York were bubbling to the surface, and it was too late for the Panthers to do anything about it. The losses mounted, Tepper fumed, and the Panthers went from a reasonably decent outfit to a mess. And all the while, that fifth-year option of Darnold's was hanging over the franchise. Finally, who's next at quarterback for the Panthers? At this point, there was the stink of desperation at the Panthers. Newton had been a former number one who got injured during his first stint in Carolina. After that, he'd lost much of his throwing zip. Two years before, Rule hadn't wanted him, but times were different now. Newton didn't work out, so Tepper and Rule then started hunting Deshaun Watson, who didn't work out. And then Tepper and Rule went after Mayfield for a second time. See the pattern? It seems that Tepper, the hedge fund genius, and Rule, his coach, went about selecting and acquiring quarterbacks by throwing names against the wall and seeing what sticks. The whole exercise was fraught with bad decisions and dubious motives. Until proper decisions are made around a long-term quarterback vision, the Panthers will be what the Panthers are now, nothing more. And this is how we end the video today. Remember to keep your eyes peeled for our next upload.